What is going on everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to the 5th episode of the New Beginner Java Game Programming Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, we're finally going to get some graphics displayed to the screen, so let's get to it. Now currently, if we run our game, I'm going to run my game right now, nothing happens. We don't even get our window displayed to the screen anymore. So what's going on? We don't get our window anymore. We still create a new game object that calls the game constructor and that sets the width, height, and title variables, but we never create our display. We moved that line of code in the last tutorial. Our display is now created in the init method. The init method is called whenever we call this run method. And the run method is called whenever we start up our thread, which is started by calling the start method of our game. And currently, we never call the start method of our game. So in order to call the init method and get our game loop running and all that fancy stuff, we have to somehow call the start method of our game. That means we're going to have to redo a little bit of how our launcher works. So instead of just creating a new game object, we're going to actually have to set this object equal to a variable. So we're going to create a game object called game and set that equal to our constructor here. So this is going to do the same exact thing except it's going to store our game object in a variable called game. Now we can say game.start and that should call the start method of our game, which should call the run method, initialize everything, which means creating the display, and then start up our game loop. And our game loop, remember, calls the tick and render methods over and over and over again. So run our game now, and there we go. Now we have a, dis a display to the screen just like as it was before. We have our title, everything works perfectly. Now we can get into actually drawing stuff to the screen. Now first things first, render basically means draw things to the screen. Just thought I'd point that word out because I'll be using that word a lot. So now that we've initialized our display and it's created, and then we go into our game loop, which calls the tick and render method over and over again, we have to add rendering code so we're able to draw stuff to the screen. In order to do that, we have to access this canvas object inside of our display class. You can either make this variable um, public, or I recommend using a getter. So public canvas get canvas. This way we can access the canvas variable from other classes. I'm assuming you know how getters like this work. So there we go. Now we can access the canvas of our display, which will allow us, remember as I explained in the previous videos, the canvas allows us to draw things to the screen. So now that we can access that, let's do the actual rendering code in our render method. We're going to need two variables, and we're going to create those at the top of our game class. They're going to be private. This one's going to be a buffer strategy, and I'm going to name that BS. And we're going to create another private variable, and it's going to be a graphics object, and it's going to be called G. Go ahead and import those, but don't initialize them to anything. I'm going to explain what they are in just a sec. Now go down to your render method, and the rest of the code that we're going to be doing in this tutorial is in the render method here. So every time this render method runs, we have to do the same thing over and over again. We have to set the buffer strategy object that we just created at the top of our game class equal to the display dot get canvas, so the we're going to get the canvas of our current window, dot, and then get buffer strategy. This will set our buffer strategy object called BS equal to whatever the current buffer strategy is of our canvas or of our game. Now what in the world is a buffer strategy? You can think of a buffer strategy as a way for the computer to draw things to the screen. It tells the computer how it should draw things to the screen. And it uses buffers to do that. Now what in the world is a buffer? Well, a buffer is essentially a hidden computer screen within your computer. That's how you can think of it. So it's kind of like a little screen inside your computer that you can't see. Of course, it's not actually a screen, it's just a bunch of memory in your computer that holds the same data as your actual computer screen. So, a buffer is like a hidden computer screen in your computer that you can't see, and you have your actual screen. So here I have a quick example. We have our buffer. We are going to draw everything to the buffer here. Then, once we end drawing, this buffer is going to move to the next buffer. We're still not going to see anything. Then, after we're done drawing again, this buffer is going to move to the actual screen so we can see it. Now, why in the world would we want to do that? Why would we want to draw to a hidden screen and then move that to the actual screen so we can see it? Well, we do that, that way we can prevent any flickering in our game. Have you ever seen like any older computer games they always flicker a lot? That's because they're drawing to the actual screen and they're not using buffers or hidden screens. I hope I made that clear. You should grasp buffers easily. Uh, you can always look them up too. So a buffer is like a hidden screen that allows us that we can draw on just like our regular screen. 
So the buffer strategy, get canvas, it gets the canvas's buffer strategy or how many buffers that the canvas is going to use. Now if this is the first time running our game, our buffer strategy or our canvas isn't going to have a buffer strategy. It has no clue how many buffers to use. So we're going to check. If our buffer strategy object is null, if the canvas doesn't have a buffer, buffer strategy, we have to create one. So we have to do display dot get canvas dot create buffer strategy. And this takes in a number or how many buffers to use. We're going to use three buffers. You really do not need more than three buffers that I don't even think it works with more than three. Three is the maximum that you should go. So we're going to create a buffer strategy for our canvas if it doesn't already have one. And we're going to make it say, all right, we're going to use three buffers. Then we're going to return out of this method or else we're going to get a bunch of errors below. So now that we've ensured that we have our buffer strategy object set, we can actually begin drawing. Now, how in the world do we go about drawing to a canvas? Well, we have to use some type of paintbrush. We have to use the graphics object. So I'm going to set our graphics object, which we named G at the top of our class, equal to the buffer strategy dot get draw graphics. There we go. So I'm going to be referring to the graphics object as G throughout this whole entire tutorial series. We're going to use, be using this object G a lot. So what in the world does graphics do? Well, the graphics object allows us to draw things to the canvas. It's like a paintbrush. It's, it's, it's like a magical paintbrush. It can draw full images to the canvas. It can draw lines. It can draw boxes, rectangles of different colors to the screen. It's literally like a magic paintbrush. And I'm going to show you how to use that in this tutorial and in the future tutorials. You're going to be an expert on how to use the graphics object at the end of this series. So the graphics object gets its self, it, it creates the magical paintbrush by getting the draw graphics of our buffer strategy. That's just basically how we create the paintbrush. I'm trying to make this as simple as possible, guys. Sorry if I'm not the greatest at explaining this. I have trouble explaining this sort of thing, but trust me, you should grasp this concept either way in the future tutorials. So, we have our magical paintbrush, let's actually draw something to the screen. So I'm going to make a comment here and say, draw here, and then, and drawing. You don't have to do this, I'm just making comments. So here is where we can actually begin drawing stuff to the screen. Now, I'm going to explain how to use the graphics object in future tutorials, but for now we're just going to make a piece of test code. You don't have to understand this part. So g.fillRect, this will fill a rectangle onto the screen, it'll create a rectangle and draw it to the screen, and it takes in four parameters, an x, y, and then a width and height. For x and y, we're going to put 0 and 0, and then we're going to pass in the width and height variables of our game. So we should get a full rectangle filling the screen of our game. Now this isn't it. We actually have to tell Java that, alright, we're done drawing. You can display it to the screen, or switch the buffers and display it to the screen. So we have to do bs.show, that'll essentially work all the buffer magic behind, and then we have to do g.dispose, which will make sure our graphics object gets done with properly. Don't forget those two lines of code or you're probably going to have problems. Once again, I tried to make this as simple as I could. Hopefully you guys understood it. If you have any questions at all, go down in the comments below. I just, I'm saying that because I personally had a really hard time. Um, getting this to work in my mind when I first began game programming, so I thought I'd mention that. Hopefully I made it clear enough, now let's actually see if we get a rectangle on our screen. Click the run button, and look at that. Our screen is no longer white, it's filled with this grayish color. This is awesome! We actually have color on our screen now. Now in the next tutorial, we're going to learn how to clear the screen and draw a few different shapes to the screen, that way we can get used to using the graphics object. Thank you so much everyone for watching, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, I hope everything went well for you guys, any questions, put them down below in the comments. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.